Wow, what an introduction. It feels almost like it's my uh, avatar. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here in Stockholm. It's actually funny because uh, uh, driving with the taxi uh, yesterday, I was remembering uh, 15 years ago, I was driving around the uh, northern part of Sweden and, and Stockholm trying to sell some of my products. And uh, the GPS doesn't work because the system was simple, simply not far enough or far good enough back then and see where we are now. So I do tools. Basically, I do holes. And uh, in English, it sounds really bad what we do because uh, we, we're changing the world one hole at a time. <laughs> I had to speak about that in, in Dubai, that, that was not so good. <laughs> but we, uh, my, my great-grandfather invented thread cutting tools, and uh, my father sold the company because he was afraid that you could not sustain production in, in a country like Denmark because the salaries was going up so much. And he was right, so he sold the company in in the 90s. I bought back the company in 2013 and I wanted to, in a linear way, take back the factory from China. But um, that seems to be a bigger issue. But 3D printing, digital manufacturing, it's a little bit like when the Wright brothers, they took their first flight. So they're trying to use this new dimension, if you will. But the first flight that the Wright brothers took was actually not faster than a running horse. But then again, they were not competing to become a faster horse. They're working on this brand new and different dimension where exponentials live. So my story is uh, trying to, I'm, I'm 40 years old, trying to shake the crisis of zero eight and think that we are not going to have a new crisis, we're just going on and on and on. But I was running a manufacturing company in 2008 and we were severely hit. All of Scandinavia were hit. Sweden was not hit so bad because fundamentally Sweden already had focused on small and medium companies and robotization of, of factories, but we did not do that in Denmark. So from my point of view, we're going into this new paradigm, and this new paradigm is very different from the old. So like when I do tools or products <clears throat> as we do it normally today, we actually just have a big lump of iron and we take away a lot of material and then we end up with some kind of product. But when we 3D print, we use exactly the amount of material we need. Usually we only use 10% of the amount of material to make the same product. So my vision and my dream is to make localized, sustainable production on demand. That is the whole goal of what we're doing. And we can now do that in a different set of ways because of the additive manufacturing. And we're seeing a rapid movement, like three years ago, uh, Airbus, they were buying up all 3D printers in the world. And I even uh, last year, I was working on a hashtag saying fake change, because nothing happened until four months ago. Airbus came out and said, yeah, you know, all these parts that we bought in Sweden and Denmark, Norway, Germany, all over Europe, we're not going to buy them next year. We're actually going to 3D print them ourselves. And you can see on this picture, 40% of non-critical parts of the A320 is going to be 3D printed from now on. And that's not it. It's, it's, it's not the 3D print. That's not changing anything. It's Lego. They 3D printed already in 1989. But it's the generative design. It's the AI that can facilitate all the designs 
So normally, if we had to make a new product and do it very differently, we would probably use five or six engineers, and they would work for three, four, six months to come up with a solution. Here, we are seeing a design being made for the galley, for the kitchen of the airplane. And it takes down to 10, 15 hours to come up with the best possible solution, often actually using uh, Mother Nature as inspiration of the design. And there's no, no engineers involved in this. It's a computer that does it. So you tell the AI the uh, the, what you want, and then it will come up with a solution for you. And then you 3D print it. We're also seeing critical parts. This is uh, the fuel nozzle for the General Electric Leap engine that's the most sold jet engine in the world. So now, this year in 2018, airplanes are actually flying around with the fuel supply system that are 3D printed. And it's much better and it's stronger and it's cheaper and it's made locally. Elon Musk is also doing it. He's now 3D printing the rocket uh, engines because he wants to do everything half price. So it takes the cost down by 70% by 3D printing something that is very, very complicated. When I went to Singularity University, uh, I met with these guys behind Made in Space, and they told me that they had a 3D printer on the International Space Station. They also told me that they lost a wrench, or what you call it in Denmark, Svensk Nøgle. <laughs> it should be called Danish Nøgle. But after figuring out how to send a drawing to the International Space Station, it took 30 minutes to send an email up there. And it took one hour to 3D print in a material that's called Ninja Flex. It's like ABS plastic. It's pretty, pretty strong. Moving parts, everything. Then production becomes very local. But don't laugh, because something that scares me a little bit is, as Lila said, we won the digital lead jersey, and I hoped that we would get some money, but we didn't. The price was working with BMW, and that's, that's also pretty cool. But one of the things that we learned is that in Denmark um, and Sweden, BMW bought 520 million Danish kroner worth of small parts for their cars. Like in Horsens in Denmark, there's a small company called BJ Gear. They do the gears for the M3 and the M5 series. And BMW is next year going to 3D print and carbon stamp these products. So they don't actually need to buy things in our countries anymore. But OK, it's only Airbus and BMW, so we're safe. <clears throat> this is Adidas. Um, Adidas is actually uh, the biggest producer of shoes in the world. Many think it's Nike, but it's actually Adidas. And today they produce more than 80% of all their shoes in uh, Far East Asia. And they actually believe that they're moving out of prototyping and into serial production within two to three years. So let's say three years into the future, 60% of Adidas production will become local. It will simply go in. I expect you put a, your foot into something, and it will scan it. And yeah, if, if the former speaker is involved, then you'll just get a robot foot. But if. <laughs> She always scares me so much. She's so clever. I think I want to, uh, when I come off stage, I will actually invite her, her clone on a date. <laughs> <laughs> but think of the implications. So, Tumor Tools, that is a 120-year-old company. Uh, I, I came to the office, and you know, big companies, they always have like a lot of flagpoles. When you go to Ikea, they have like 10 flagpoles, and we only have one. 
Um, so, and the flag was, it was on the ground and, ooh, that's really scary. So um, I called up the flag guy and said, uh, uh, the flagpole guy and said, oh, um, this flagpole, uh, I need a, a new top. And it was like, oh, that's so funny. We don't have that on stock anymore. But can you make it for me? No, you have to buy a new flagpole. I can sell you one for 18,000. How much will it be to put it up? I don't know, that's an hour price. While I was doing that, because the principality of Copenhagen, they gave us a, a bus driver that could not get a job, uh, so they gave him for free, uh, so we tried to teach him something. We called him Tilskuds Klaus. <laughs> <laughs> I, he was a nice guy. Um, but it was very hard for us to teach him to run the CNC machines. He kept doing wrong stuff. So then, uh, <laughs> while, I was <laughs> while I was talking to, to the flagpole guy, uh, Tilskus Klaus, he, uh, he, uh, he took an iPad Pro and he, uh, he did something to it. He hacked it and then he scanned the part, put it into that additive uh, or, or generative design system, and then he just 3D printed a brand new, sorry, part, a brand new part that was stronger than the one before. It was enhanced in all manners it could, and he did it on a printer that cost 49,000 Danish kroner. And the part cost 12 kroner, and the program was for free if we didn't save the drawing, which we should have done because all the other flagpoles on the road was <laughs> falling. So when I, I, I'm not like super good at school things, but when, when I get, when I went to school, that's what they tried to teach me. That's what all of you know. And then Tilskus Klaus, which is not called Tilskus Klaus now, now he's called uh, Rich Klaus. <laughs> he just did like that. What? And, and, and the cat design is uh, artificial intelligence, so you don't even have to be clever, and he's a former bus driver without a job. The, the plus granulate and the 3D printer, that's becoming one part now, and it's also becoming very easy to do in, in metal. So if you combine a guy like that with, with, with technology like this, th now, now we are around, let's just say we're five years into the future, roughly. But this, this is amazing. If you look at the clock, yes, it's speed up a little bit, so I don't bore you too much, but it's... You can make a complex part in ABS material, the same things that you build uh, car frames, uh, things that hold uh, engine parts. That's strong. You could do it faster than you can make a lasagna from the fridge. So that will be quite amazing. Think about just driving your car to the car shop and they will actually print the new part faster then they can take off the old part. Is that true? Can that be done? Now, we also got to work with IKEA. I love IKEA for what it is, and because it's Swedish, obviously. I don't like so much to go there with my wife. <laughs> it, it takes, it finds the worst in both of us. But this, this is actually, this is IKEA's idea of helping marriages around the world. It's self-assembly furniture. <laughs> Roughly eight years into the future. It's called 4D. We know 1D, we know 2D, 3D, pretty cool. 4D, very cool. Hensen Moritz, also a pretty cool company. So, what they do is, they say, now we're eight years into the future. They expect to have machines behind the counters where you, you will walk in. It could both be women and men, but they're focusing on women right now, and they take the generative design AI, and then it will figure out, oh, you have long or short legs, and it will simply make like a one-off, like a Chanel dress, like the, per <coughs> sorry, the perfect fit. 
Uh, we're also uh, working with Nordic uh, Minister Council Minister Council to see if we can use uh, bio uh, products for, for this. So uh, Scandinavia can be become self-sustainable on, on the material side. But the interesting thing is, when you print the dress, it's not actually bigger than this. It's, it's like a ball it prints, and then you just, you just take it out and you do like this, and then it folds out and become a beautiful dress. And if you want to, you can take it off in your garden and throw it on the grass, and it will become part of nature. The model said it was really scratchy. <laughs> so, yeah, construction. This is the first six-story 3D printed house in China. And uh, yeah, China, they put $2.5 billion into 3D printing houses. It's a it's fairly nice house. This is um, blood veins being 3D printed, and if you put enough of them on top of each other, it becomes skin or could eventually become a meat robot. And this company called uh, Cellink, they expect within 10 years that they can pr produce human body parts. And if you were thinking about if we can 3D print a human robot, they expect 20 years from now. Maybe computer doublings will take it down to 15. But they already use uh, gene therapy and 3D printed an ear for a woman in Australia. I don't know how she lost her ear, but it's probably an angry kangaroo. <laughs> but what they all also did, which is pretty cool, is instead of getting a pacemaker, then they took the same genes that is inside a electric eel, and then they can 3D print dot it around your heart, and together with your iPhone, smartphone, it can do the same as a pacemaker. Let's hope your iPhone do, don't run out of battery. But there's some ethical questions in regards to all of this. We have to think about good and evil. For example, together with our company got 12 million Danish kroner last year from the Innovation Fund, and together with companies in Sweden and Norway, we're working on different types of things. We're not only doing tools anymore. We have, for example, made uh, with the Norwegian company the best silencer for guns in the world. It's 70% better. Do we have an obligation to think more than just earning money? Do we have to think also about doing some good in the world? And we're currently discussing how to go forward and I hope that our company will choose to do good. That's my idea. But Scandinavia is a very special country, or oh, sorry, a very special place. And we, have, we do have some pretty high uh, taxes and salaries, but we have very creative and agile uh, workforce. And uh, I do see that there's a paradigm that is ending now. Um, it was actually starting to be disrupted already uh, 20 years ago when we got the first CNC machines. Uh, and now I think uh, the super cycle is ending and this, what we see all these beautiful people you're going to hear over the next two days and have heard uh, is actually just this new super cycle that is starting. So what I'm wishing for in, in Scandinavia is something like Spotify uh, within uh, materials, products, um, tools, whatever you want. So we are currently building uh, like an app store, but for products. And um, I, I do believe that we will have that ready within two, two, three years. So downloadable, hackable parts, localized sustainable production on demand, saving the world and doing a lot of good things. And like this beautiful 3D printed, self 3D printing bridge in Holland. We have to constantly, wherever we are, small or big companies, we have to constantly think about how can we bridge into the future? Because this new dimension, it's here, it's around us, whether we want it or not. Thank you so much for listening to me.